Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to episode 15 of Roadcast, your dedicated road company podcast and one-stop shop for all the latest news, exclusive interviews and clips of the week. We have a very exciting episode for you today going over some of the latest features that will be added to the game and that are currently available on the PTS public test server, including the new map, new rogue and many other features. We also have an exclusive interview with Ghost X Kitten and of course you'll see the latest clips of the week. I am your host Radha. Let's get into the roadcast. All the news this week comes from the PTS server, which is the public test server we were given access to via codes from Road Company, where you can go on and see the latest patch early, test around with it, and give them feedback in terms of bugs, balancing, and other features like that. That server went live at 4 p.m. on Friday and we're ending at 9 a.m. on Monday. So we have the entire weekend to play through it, test the features, including the new rogue, new map, balancing changes, weapon changes, perk changes, and so much more, including some really interesting map changes. Now, this is a news flash, so I'm not going to do a full patch note breakdown for you here, but I will link it at the top of the description so you can go read it for yourself. I will, however, cover some of the main areas that are of most interest. We'll start then with the new map, Glacier. And what this is, this is a boat in the middle of uh, the ocean and is a very close quarters, very, a lot of lines of sight, a lot of flanking opportunities, uh, and actually a really good map from the playtesting I've done with it. It does have a good flow to it. The bomb sites, there's a lot of zip wires, and a lot of close quarter combat for those players who like flanking in SMGs. To go along with this, though, is the new Rogue Seagrid. Now, if you want to see my initial impressions, I do have a video that went live yesterday going over my initial impressions and where I see her fitting into the meta. I will not be doing a guide until I've had a bit more time to play with her and until she goes back onto live servers. However, though, she is a breacher type, but instead of the traditional breacher that we have with the explosives from Dima or the hacking from Glitch, she is there with her ballistic shield to push onto the objective and be a wall in front of your team that moves, allowing them to advance onto the position. She actually seems really strong, and you'll see from my video exactly my thoughts on her, but I think she's a good rogue, not overly tuned, although maybe there, there could be a few balancing things that we need to work out but does seem pretty strong at the moment. Shown in the PTS that will probably make it to the live servers are some new game modes as well. We see the uh, rotating game mode Hardcore Demolition where there is no health regeneration. We also see a, probably a permanent game mode which is going to be Practice Strikeout. We have Practice Demolition, Practice Extraction versus Bots and now they're adding Practice Strikeout into that as well. Currently on the servers, on the live servers, Sniper Strikeout uh, is back. The Strikeout mode with uh, 25 lives where you go and just snipe people for fun. In terms of then delving into some of the balancing changes in the patch notes, you have map changes, including some major map changes to Vice, where the wall hop from mid to B Street is now completely gone. That doesn't mean the wall hop is, uh, the wall is still there with no wall hop. It's actually completely removed in favor of a staircase going down. There's also your standard bug fixes that come through with some of the bugs that have been going on at the moment, including Glitch now being able to hack trophy systems again, which is a really nice quality of life change for him and may bring him back into the meta. And then because this is another major release of the game, you'll see balancing changes to weapons. You'll see balancing changes to perks, including a really nice one to cloaked, which means uh, Fixer, when he sees an enemy through uh, has cloaked on, they come up as cold. And from testing this, it basically means they're a black outline, uh, similar to how other thermals work and other thermal uh, removals work. It's actually a really good change and is bringing Fixer down from this really heavy meta that we see it with him in now. There's also a few rogue changes, but they have been noted as we go along, including Dima, Phantom, and some other ones that you'll see, whether it be their weapons, their perks, or whatever it is. There's been a few tuning things that have gone on, which all seem, from my experience, quite good and quite balanced going forward. And then another really nice kind of quality of life change, but also quite a game changing one, is the economy system changes that we did mention last week. This includes uh, assists now being worth 500, where they were originally 1,000, and downs now being worth 1,000, where they were originally 500. That makes a lot more logical sense. I don't know why it took this long for that to work out, but here we are, we finally got it. And that's gonna add a lot of momentum to those who can frag out during their demolition, extraction, or strikeout games. And then also on the PTS server is the aim assist PC controller change adaptation that they were talking about. And I wanna give a very brief overview of how I felt that uh, was when I was playing on it. My initial reaction is that it's pretty negligible. I really didn't feel a difference at all, particularly when I'm aiming down sight at like any sort of midi close range long range it felt absolutely fine i was still able to hit my shots really consistently but the where i did maybe see it kind of fall off a little bit is your close range smg hip fire that's kind of where i felt like it wasn't as strong i couldn't be in people as much um and that's kind of that, that that's really where i felt it anywhere else though really didn't feel like a change if that is the change that they've just nerfed that close range sort of corner peaking third person shooting uh, hip fire 
acting as a good change, I think that was maybe the strongest aspect of it. And it remained the aim assist for those longer range engagements, which is what we really need because that's where the finicky movement of a controller really does feel impactful. That's pretty much the core stuff coming out of the PTS server. As I said, the link for the patch notes will be down in the description below. You can go check that out and have a read for the specific changes yourself, such as the perk changes, weapon changes, gadget changes, etc, etc. There's one more thing I do want to touch on, and this is about the ranked experience you gain as you're going through the ranked system and some developments that we've had come from that from a bit of experience with more people climbing up to rogue. So what I've noticed from my original video that explained it is that the uh, system where you get plus 24 minus six up until diamond 22 is not always the same. Everybody doesn't seem to be getting the same amount as they climb. And there's a few different reasons for this, I think. Plus 24 minus six is the maximum you can get. And then from what I said in my video at uh, diamond 22, it starts to decrease the plus 23 minus 7, then plus 22 minus 8, and so on. That has been my experience and the experience of other good players I've seen. But now that we're having a lot more of the player base start that journey, we're seeing some disparity with some people in bronze or silver not getting that plus 24 minus 6 in favor of getting plus 18 minus 11, let's say. Now, this was quite confusing. I originally thought it was a bug and tweeted out about it. And whilst I don't have a response from accumulating more data from other people, I am thinking that there may be some sort of matchmaking system, some sort of matchmaking ranking in there that is determining this. I do not think it's off how many games you've played. I've personally played about 150 games and that is not why I'm decreasing. I've remained that throughout the whole time. I think it is some sort of ranking where the game is trying to tell you, hey, this is what your rank is. This is where you should be. And so if you're losing games, you're going to be punished a lot more, even if you're only in gold or platinum. I don't know how they're deciding to measure this matchmaking system. I don't know whether it's based off your performance or it's based off your level or what the factors might be. But just if you do see there's some inconsistency in your XP gain compared to your friends or something, do let me know in the comments what you're seeing, what level you are, how you tend to go about in games, whether you're a top fragger, bottom fragger or somewhere in between. And let me know so I can start to accumulate a bit more data and maybe give a more final answer and go to the devs with it for a bit of an explanation. For now, though, just remember, you may not be getting the same ranking as, say, I am. I don't know why exactly. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a fairly decent player. I am a high level. I do tend to top frag. I do tend to perform pretty well, and I'm pretty consistent with my wins. So I don't know exactly why this is happening. Do let me know in the comments what you guys are experiencing with your rank climb. That's going to take us to the end of the news. Now I'm going to take you on to the interview with Ghost X Kitten. She was originally meant to be my guest last week, but again, due to those scheduling issues and internet issues on my part, we did have to reschedule for this week and it's a fantastic interview. If you don't know who she is, you'll learn a little bit more about her here. Uh, she did host a streamer melee only tournament, which went down really well, incredibly fun. And the best part of it was all the streamers raided the winner afterwards, which I think is such a great unique feature. And she's so positive, so in keeping with all my other guests and knows a lot of my other guests such as Elvin and Birdbrain. And I think you guys will really enjoy her and her content. So make sure you do go check her out after this episode of Roadcast. Uh, so the first question I do like to ask my guests here on Rockcast is uh, what got you into gaming? Where does your gaming history, gaming career start? Like, take me back to, to, to the depths of it. So uh, I've been gaming since I was little, like little, little. I forget how old, but I think the first thing that I started playing on was a little Game Boy. And my very first nice. game ever was Kirby. Nice. Um, <laughs> and I also played some of my dad's S SNES. Yep. Um, I think Donkey Kong specifically. Um, and then from there, I remember playing on the first PlayStation and my first game that I ever completed was Raymond. Okay. And I was super excited when I completed it. And then, I don't know, like I played a bunch of games, but like competitively, my first competitive game was uh, Saints Row multi multiplayer. Nice. <laughs> um, which like not many people know about it was such a nice. small community and because it was such a small community everyone kind of knew everything about each other like yeah. everyone knew who this person was and that person and it there was rivalries and all that <laughs> clans. um yes yes yeah, clans yeah i remember that yeah <laughs> and then um i don't know their servers shut down and I remember at one point, like, I really wanted to do that again, and mm -hmm. I couldn't find something similar, and then I came across GTA, okay. which had uh, team death matches, and it was very similar to Saints Row, yeah. and I got into that for, like, four years. Wow. Um, I'm still in the same crew that I was okay. in. Um, we're known as the Mobs, and nice. they've been around for six years. We were, like, number seven on the leaderboards, like, the world leaderboards of GTA, oh, okay. which wow. was really awesome. You, pure, pure grinder on GTA, then. Yeah, I assume yeah. You, I assume you're on about GTA 5 specifically. 
Yeah, GTA Five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they started uh, on Max Payne, I believe, uh -huh. um, and then I joined them four years ago. Uh -huh. Um, and then one day I was watching one of my favorite streamers, uh -huh. and they were streaming Rogue Company, Ooh. and I just I thought about how similar Rogue Company was to GTA, like mm -hmm. the third person shooter, the okay, combat yeah, yeah. role, and everything like that, that. and it was just. Actually. Yeah, it was just love from there. I uh -huh. just fell in love with it. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of I had a very similar entrance into Rogue. I think I saw I just saw it advertised like twice, and I'm like, hmm, this game. <laughs> Let's have a look. This is my sort because of, I like I used to like Gears and stuff. So again, it's that that sort of third person and stuff. And it's like I never got into Fortnite. Were you into Fortnite at all? Um, yes, I was into Fortnite. Oh, okay. Fortnite. I have a love hate relationship with Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just on a hate relationship. So. <laughs> it's like it's fun, but it's also really sweaty. And like, yeah. I just I'm not a good sweater in Fortnite. <laughs> right. I'm I'm you. good at sweating in Rogue Company, but I'm yeah. not good at sweating in Fortnite. So like, yeah. All right. So what is it specifically about Rogue Company then that is interesting to you? Other than it's like similar just to the games you played before, what is it that keeps you I playing just... today? I just like the whole third person shooter. I love mm -hmm. the style. I love the mechanics. Mm -hmm. I love the community. The community is like probably one of the best okay. things about this game. Like I met so many cool people just from playing this game, you included. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I think that there's big things for Rogue Company. I think it has a lot of potential and I could see it growing and getting pretty big if the devs keep up with it, you know? Yeah. So this is going to be my main game and yeah. I'm sticking with it for a while. I like yeah. it. I like it. Uh, and sort of with the community, you said you met, but met a bunch of uh, new people and you did decide to get them all together uh, for your own little tournament, Melee Only Tournament. Uh, talk, to yes. me, talk to me a little bit about that, that, that the idea, how that came about and, and what made you want to do it. So the way it came about, what made me come up with it was I was thinking about how many people I've met so far in the rogue community, specifically mm -hmm. streamers. And yeah. I was thinking, oh, this person will get along with this person. Or I think this person would vibe really well with this person. And I was just like, well, what can I do to kind of introduce them to each other? Like a fun way to like bring them together. And I was like, oh my God, I could do like a little tournament where like, um, four different streamers are on the same team together. So they have to communicate with each other, which would, you know um establish like a bond you know where they yeah. would get to know each other and stuff like that and then also their communities are watching yeah, exactly. and they would be exposed to the other streamers and if you know they happen to like those streamers they could go and follow them and uh yeah it's it's like a a big community based collab networking yeah. type thing you know it's just it's overall a win-win for everybody. You know, everybody gets something out of it. And that's what I really wanted. That was my goal to make sure that everybody, yeah. you know, benefited from it somehow. Exactly. And I, when, when I heard about it, I was, I think I was in Birdbane stream and he was like, oh, I've got a tournament tonight. I'm like, oh, what, what are you doing, man? Because me and Birdbane, I said, he was my first ever roadcast guest. Um, so me and him go way back, like, like to start the game. I hit him up because he's just so positive. And that was sort of the theme of a lot of your guests as well, was they're all really positive people, uh, which I think was awesome. Uh, but he's like, yeah, I got a tournament. I'm like, oh, cool, cool. What's, what's about it? It's like, Melee Only Tournament. I said, that sounds like so much fun. So that's sort of like where I got introduced to your name. And then I saw you in his chat. And then I left Birdbrain's chat. And I went to, to Elvin, who's another, another <laughs> friend, another broadcast. And then um, he's like, oh, I'm going to tournament. I'm like, oh, you the Melee one? He's like, yeah. And then I saw you in his <laughs> chat. And it's like, oh, OK, so this, this, there's a theme here. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, I, was, I, I thought it was absolutely awesome. Uh, and another part I liked about it, um, I believe this was this was featured, it was everyone would then raid the winners, right? Yes, like that. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Which I think is yeah, so, so cool. Go on. Yeah, so like, that's how everyone will benefit. So even mm -hmm. if they didn't win, they would still be exposed to other communities. And then the person who does win gets raided by everyone else, Yeah. Um, which was, yeah, that was huge. That was really, really huge Um, as like a prize, I think. Yeah, that, that, that's actually great. And like, cause as, as streamers, you know, raids are always a really great hype moment. So then getting yeah. like 16 people raid you at once, sharing the communities and stuff like that's, I literally couldn't think of as, as a streamer, a better prize pool. Like, you know, instead of giving them like $50, you drop that raid, you share the communities. I like that. That, that is amazing. I think. Uh, yeah. I think that thank a, you so much. <laughs> I thought that was a really, really like unique idea because it is streamers and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what about the tournament scene then? Uh, I don't know if you play competitively. Do you, you look into um, like, tournament CMGs and things like that? 
eventually i would like to play in uh rogue company tournaments like mm-hmm. actual tournaments yeah um i played in one and that's where i actually met elvin um okay. the tournament was hosted by exodus i think that's okay. how you say his name i'm not sure rome I think, um uh, the, uh, the rogue cup yes the rogue cup yes there's ones yeah um and we were on a team together but we were all against each other so it was a free for all and you know Uh, whoever got the most kills went on mm -hmm. and he was on my team and i didn't do well at all but that's okay (laughs) uh because it was my very first tournament and i was having a lot of fun and like when i realized that i wasn't going to be winning what i decided to do was start resing my teammates okay to give them like (laughs) <laughs> more of a chance that way yeah. you know like I, I was just helping everyone out i was like mm-hmm. okay well look if i'm not gonna win i'm at least gonna have part in helping someone else win yeah so yeah and that's where i met elvin that's so yeah. cool that's so cool yeah 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 and when i went to his stream because i was looking for uh new streamers to watch when i went into a stream he was like oh i remember you you're from that tournament <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're, the, you're the first to get resing me it was great and it, it was just so cool that like he he recognized me i was mm-hmm. like oh my god i didn't even know i thought he was you know like this this big time rogue mm-hmm. player and i'm like no way that he'll remember me <laughs> like no way yeah. <laughs> and he did he's yeah he's, he's he's such a nice guy he's so he's so popular. he really is he's so yeah. cool yeah i actually met elvin because he when i was like re- first started he dropped into my chat just by himself um said hi asked if i want to play some games together i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. And off comms because I, I don't play on comms that much with viewers uh just so i can talk to chat i think a lot of, a lot yeah. of streamers do that um and then i was like oh man this man is goaded right <laughs> and then uh i then see him in my recommended at some point i'm like oh i recognize that name and i drop in and he's just the nicest guy like it's like literally. he really is he's so <laughs> positive and that's what i look for like when i am looking mm-hmm. for other streamers to kind of vibe with and like build a friendship with that whole positive, you know, um, good natured personality is what I look for. Mm-hmm. I look for people who are just overall emulating or uh, not emulating. What's the word? Just radiating, admitting, admitting, admitting good vibes. That's a good one. Yeah, admitting. I think that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's definitely a reflection of, of yourself, isn't it? Because I said, I've, I've put by your streams. You've been in, in my streams. You've been in everyone's streams. You're just super positive the whole way through. Uh, thank you uh, yeah i definitely think that's that's the way this community needs is what the community needs um from the stream section of it especially because you know competitive gamers there's always that level of like toxicity i guess like just that that sort of ego that you kind of need to compete at a really high level yeah. just be like a bit, a bit of trash talk but in a nice way yeah hopefully um yeah yeah but then a little do... bit of trash talk is okay as yeah. long as it's not like you no know, like serious like as long as it's in all good fun you yeah. know like like when bird tells me i look like a shoe you know like <laughs> i know yeah <laughs> that was a moment <laughs> uh that's what i remember for a while uh but yeah like that and that's definitely what like, this community needs um so where do you see then row company going forward from this point where it's at now we're in open beta technically we're coming to the end of the year to the end of the roadmap we're looking at a new rogue we're looking at a new map hopefully a battle pass at some point because the roadmap said we should get one where do you think it's going to go from this point into 2021 so i'm not quite sure where it will go but where i want it to go Mm -hmm. is hopefully i want it to get as big as fortnite possibly because Fortnite is still pretty big, but I feel like maybe it's dying out a bit mm-hmm. and we need a new game to kind of until take yesterday. over. <laughs> and Yeah, until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to see more modes. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully a regular team deathmatch mode where you don't have like a team life limit. You could just kind of play like you would in a regular Call of Duty yeah. TDM, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and then also, since they're coming out with a battle pass, I know it's not exactly necessary for it, battle pass, but mm-hmm. I would kind of like a battle royale for Rogue Company. I think that would be uh-huh. really interesting to see. Yeah. I think that would really, really pick up uh, popularity for it, like yeah. big time. I, 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 I've I gone back and forth on this, actually, because the game definitely has aspects that are very um, battle royale-esque in terms of what they could do with it. I think, and I, I said this, uh, like, really with Star Wars, I said, you need to make sure that the rogues don't play a part. I think rogues should only be cosmetic and everyone just, everyone drops in at the same part. There's not like Lancer who's just always OP, you know, like in in strike in, yeah. in, in the Battle Royale. But I, I'm, I, I've lent more towards either no Battle Royale, honestly, because it's not the style of the game, or a rotating game mode, like a little, like a mini Royale. That would be- and I think Arms Race was 
maybe maybe a, a tester for them on that with the weapons on the floor that was my initial thought when i saw the weapons on the floor i'm like oh that's uh that's cheeky <laughs> that's a cheeky mechanic to be coding in just for a one game mode you know yeah um, i actually really enjoyed arms race yeah but uh, for the Battle Royale, I mean, yes, uh, the rogues have abilities, but maybe they could do something where <laughs> you could play whatever rogue you want um, for that mode. Yeah. And their abilities, like all of the different rogue abilities can be found on the map. So let's yes. say you're Lancer, you could pick up Dima's ability or you could pick up Phantom's mm. ability or something like that. I think that would be really cool. I think that would be That would awesome. be crazy. Yeah, I think that'd be so cool. Uh, and again, you find weapons on the ground. I don't think that there's an element to it that would be good. Um, I think it should be down the line. I think they need to focus on the things. I don't know if you've come across this. Have you come across uh, the, the the comms issue since you since you've been on where you can hear the enemy team? This is a new bug. Yes, so yes, funny. that was very funny. And I actually made a friend through it. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, we we, we were get we were getting crushed like six zero yesterday or something, and um, we we the flip happened. So you went onto we went onto the attacking side and. Uh, everyone could hear each other and we all decided to have an emote party in the middle we were just like look you guys win this like you six owed us let's just go dance in the middle of the map and we just had so much fun until i i i, I may have been the one to to start the chaos <laughs> and start throwing bats <laughs> around <laughs> um but yeah no i think that's that's fun uh what do you think of the new rogue then so that's a few of the newer changes because i would have just mentioned them uh, at the start of, of of the show uh in in the new section so what do you think of uh the new map and the new rogue we'll start with the new rogue because that one's interesting to me okay uh, so the new, the new rogue that seems like uh a pretty cool concept uh -huh. you know the whole right shield thing i don't know too much about her mm -hmm. but i do know that she's meant to be played as uh like aggressively she's meant to yeah. be played as like um an aggressive pushing type mm -hmm. rogue um so i'm actually really excited for that i'm excited to play her and see what she's about see what yeah. her passives are yeah and uh you know i can't wait to see what the new meta is going to be when she uh yes. jumps into the scene that's yeah. going to be interesting to see how people play her especially in comp yeah I, that I, would be really cool. i think she has potential to shake it up she's actually what i wanted animal to get reworked into um because I, I I don't like Anvil. It's very apparent if you've ever been to my stream. I know you don't have. like Anvil. I don't like Anvil. <laughs> and I said what might make him a bit more fun is if you could move with the shield. Like you could place it down and then pick it up, and it's like a smaller shield that he can sort of move forward with. But he's still like you can shoot him in the head or the arms or the feet or something. Well, now we've got Secret, yeah. uh, and that's kind of what, what she's about, I think. And I, I I really like the design of her kit. Uh, I like the shield. I like that it blocks damage. Obviously, that's what shield does. Um, I like the stim shot, um, which is the new gadget she was with, uh, which gives you a little bit of extra health, a little bit of speed, and starts your health regen immediately. Uh, I think that's a really cool concept. Um, I like uh, what else? I like her passive, which is you can be crouched if you're or you're slow immune, and if you're crouched, I believe you move faster than normal as well. No um, way. So she's basically going to be this little turtle with a shield with a little pistol over the top, just moving at you like this. I think that's so cool. <laughs> Uh, I think it's... kind of like those riot guys in a cod, the yes, ones that run exactly. around and stab you. That, was that would hopefully her melee is a knife. I would oh, honestly yeah. love that. That would be cool. Yeah, something like that. Just uh, go around. Exactly, <laughs> like a little shielded assassin <laughs> with a yeah. flashbang as well. It was a really good, really good the cod man. Oh dear, no, that, I think I think that would be too much. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited for her. I, I think they've added a lot of rogues in, like the pace they're adding rogues in from Dale to Fixer and now to Seagrid. I'm liking the pace they're going at um and i like how unique they've all been as well what are your thoughts on the, what yeah. are your thoughts on like, some of the rogues and who is your favorite rogue my favorite rogue okay for the longest time was ronin mm -hmm. and now my new favorite rogue, rogue is dima okay. i have him he's the first rogue i ever mastered nice. um and i play him the most him and ronin i nice. also like lancer mm -hmm. and phantom um i'm starting to like glitch Oh. I actually like the fact that his melee is a bat because uh -huh. that's my favorite melee in the game. It is very satisfying. I like that he has flashes and I like that he has the Simtex, uh -huh. the, that uh, sticky grenade. Uh -huh. I love that. Um, there was somebody else. Who am I missing? Oh, and I like Dahlia. Yeah. Dahlia is pretty cool. I was really excited when she came out. I played her a ton when she first came out. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but like, she, she goes live. We all go live at the same time. We're like, that's, that's grind Dahlia. It was great. Um, yeah, I thought yeah. she was awesome. Uh, I like that you pick up Glitch, actually. Glitch is a really underrated pick, I feel like, because of how hard he is with that with his hack ability. Um, I think as guns and stuff, he's got awesome guns. Uh, flash, same text as you're on about, but I think it's the hack ability that people struggle with. 
Are you more of a strikeout player or a demo player? Which one do you uh, float towards? Definitely more strikeout. I do uh -huh. have a group of friends that I will reluct reluctantly play <laughs> demo with because I enjoy playing with them and they make demo fun. That's good. I don't mind demo, but I wouldn't play it on my own. Um, yeah. Definitely a strikeout player. I love that fast-paced action, mm -hmm. that nonstop chaos. You know, yeah. the just it's like it's it's more my speed. I think yeah. demo. I like the tactical aspect, um, and I like the competitive aspect of it. But it's too slow for me, and mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that you know you could only get four kills per round. Yeah, and that's if your teammates don't get to them first. You know, yeah. strikeout. You have more room to you know hog up all the kills you want <laughs> yeah exactly so, go sit in the spawn I, wait for them to spawn get a few headshots this is all great isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah i really really hope that i think i did hear that they might be doing this but i really really hope that they come out with ranked for a strikeout if they do that i will be grinding ranked non-stop <laughs> yeah i believe what they said when they brought a ranked is that it's demo at the moment but they're open to doing other game modes as well uh yeah, yeah, yeah to my next question you mentioned it as well earlier what other gamers would you like to see we sort of touched on battle royale is there any other ones that spring to your mind in terms of a game mode that you would like nothing that i could think of right now um there's so many different ideas you know so many mm -hmm. different games have done so many other things that i think rogue i wouldn't say can copy from yeah. but can take as inspiration mm -hmm. and apply um definitely a, a regular team deathmatch mode i would love yeah um, and definitely a battle royale that would be incredible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe they could even pull in some modes similar to what COD has, like hardpoint. Well, strikeout is kind of like hardpoint yeah, actually. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's a weird fusion. Huh? Strikeout is a really weird point. fusion of like of like yeah of all of them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Capture the flag. I know that one's been talked about a lot since or the start of the game. Capture the flag. Yeah, something like that. Um, Maybe even a prop hunt. I don't know how they would incorporate that. Would that. Be funny. Um, but that would be really fun. Maybe like funny. a hide and seek mode. That I don't know how that fun. would be, but like, I don't think really. there's a single game that has a hide and seek mode yet. No, I think it's very hard to pull. I, I'd be interested to see how if how, how they could pull that off. I feel like that. That would well, be. Cool. That's kind of like because you're going like the G mod startup game there, aren't you? In terms of like. Going that route, I think that could be that could be cool. I wonder if they'll get to the point where we could mod Rogue like that, because that's what G mod is. It's a, it's, a, it's a mod of other things. I definitely think the the game has has, has lots to go for. Um, and yeah, I think as as content creators, we're all very excited to see where it goes. Um, but there has been a lot of new games out recently. COD is one of them. I know you said Rogue is your main game. Any games you're looking at coming up? Cyberpunk. Uh, uh of interest. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. <laughs> this this little game that no one's uh -huh. had. Well, I've never played a Cyberpunk, the other one, before. The there Witcher. is another Cyberpunk, right? There's, uh, there's the Witcher series, which is from the same developers, but Cyberpunk is its own standalone, I believe. Okay, yeah. Um, I think it's not really my style of game, uh -huh. but it does look interesting. It does look very cool. Mm -hmm. I like that Keanu Reeves is in it. <laughs> so I might, I might give it a chance. I mean, there was this one game that I absolutely fell in love with that I gave a chance to that i wouldn't have normally given which was red red dead redemption okay. 2 yeah i got it because my crew on gta was going to be getting it and when online came out we were mm -hmm. going to move to that game because gta was going to be dying off when yeah. red dead came out um and since online wasn't released right away i decided i would play the story mode for it and mm -hmm. i fell in love with it it's still definitely all time like my number wow. one favorite game like that experience was incredible that's, Such an incredible experience. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad because yeah, that's that's very yeah. much a startup game that Cyberpunk will be as well. Um, a little bit more different themes in terms of the in the, not the cowboy scene and uh, that's thing yeah. more into the, the futuristic scene. Um, right. But yeah, like I'm I'm actually more Red Dead guy. Like I'm more Red Dead Witcher is like fantasy monster slaying stuff. So like right, I'm right. not sure whether I'll love the futuristic aspect of Cyberpunk, but the, I. I trust the developers so much because I loved The Witcher, the, that whole series yeah. and the TV show. And I haven't read the books, but I will read the books. Uh, they're incredible, and I, I'm looking forward to what they do with this game. Uh, I just hope they, they they live up to it, honestly. Um, you know what? I think I think I'm going to give it a go. I think I'm going to check it out and play it. I'm going to give it that chance that I gave to Red Dead because yeah. you never know. Maybe it'd be another amazing journey that you get taken on that you know you can't really get anywhere else. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a big hype moment as well uh, coming up in the next yeah. next. What is it like week? Yeah, less than a week. I think ninth, eleventh, tenth, September, December. 
I don't know. It, it, <laughs> Sometimes. It, it's a date. My, my brain's weird because I got like pre-ordered. <laughs> so I've got like a different date and stuff. So yeah. Um, totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So what then is coming up for you and your content? What are you looking to do in the next month, two months, three months? What are your plans uh, in terms of your content and stuff going forward? So I definitely plan on having more streamer showdowns. I want to have those at least once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, I might want to have a second type of tournament open to other players who are not not streamers. You know, Mm -hmm. maybe there could be a cash prize or something. Maybe I could give away road bucks. Um, And then other than that, I want to get more YouTube content out. I actually Mm -hmm. just finished my streamer showdown video that we previously had that I'm going to be uploading soon. And I am working on a montage, which I just finished today. I just have to work on nice. a couple of finishing touches. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I plan to do a few more montages and maybe a couple of uh, interesting videos. Like I have this thing that I enjoy doing where I sneak up on the enemy and see how long it takes them to notice I'm there. And their reactions are always hilarious every time. Doing that. So I think I want to put together, like once I have enough footage, I want to put together an entire video of me just playing with my food, basically. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I do that all the time, though, Jerry. I love it's just... It's so funny. Because, because it's third person, they can kind of see you behind them. And then you're just they standing think that there. that you're their teammate. Exactly. And you've got the axe like, held up. And I'm like, come on, turn around, I dare you. This is brilliant. <laughs> I'm so glad yeah, I found someone who does that as well. I think I'm just like trolling people when I do it. I'm glad someone else knows the way. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. So, uh, final question then: Where can people find you uh, to to see all these things? Here's a chance for you to plug uh, any channel, every channel that you like. They'll all be down in the description as well. But where can people find you? So they could find me on YouTube, which is under Ghost X Kitten. They could find me on Twitch TV slash Ghost X Kitten, and also on Twitter under the same name Ghost X Kitten. Yeah, My name is the same on all different types of social media. I also have a TikTok that I post clips on, and an Instagram that I post the same clips on, just in case if someone doesn't have TikTok, they have Instagram. Boom, they see it. You know, cool. so I'm everywhere basically. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So guys, I definitely recommend you go and check it out. Uh, Ghost X Kitten uh for for all the fun vibes she's so positive so awesome uh go check her out on those of things and it will be linked to the description for you as well i also love the brand consistency that's a good shout a big thank you to ghost x kitten there for coming onto the podcast and being such an amazing guest guys please go check her out she's amazing she does such great content for you guys and i definitely definitely have the highest recommendation you guys go and check her out for now though we're going to move on to the clip of the week and this one comes actually from my discord server again if you want to join that you can go find it in the description below uh, where he submitted this clip to me with a nice little clutch that he got on Dahlia using the MXR. Here we see Sir Wolf landing in his extraction game, so they're hacking the site now with their advantage on this side. He's just floating over by the zip. Will he decide to go across it? He's looking at it. He does go across. He's moving across. Will he see anyone on the approach? He hears someone. Sees the demon across the zip. The demon doesn't see him. He takes him down. Has to roll away because there are a lot of enemies looking his way. He throws down a preemptive grenade. Maybe he's going to bait somebody out with it. But the Ronin runs into it. Blows up. That is two downs. Two finishes for the Dali here with Sir Wolf. Here's someone running around. The Saint, he's in a bit of a bad spot here. Gets beamed up. He's only half HP, but the Saint does the fatal mistake of jumping up on the box, getting beamed and losing the round for his team. Okay then guys, that's going to take us to the end of Roadcast. If you did enjoy and you'll see more weekly podcast episodes, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more from me, I do daily educational road company content here on this channel, so drop a subscribe for that as well. All the links you need are going to be down in the description below, guys. For now, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll catch you on the next video.